money led me to dancing. How was the oh. camaraderie with the women? We used to fight. I used to fight over money. How Except do the women stay clean? You know, some girls cut their tampon string and put their tampon in to keep discharge from coming down. Did somebody introduce you to dance? It was your friends doing it? I went to Blue Flame with one of my homeboys. Uh-oh. I was like, they making some money in here. They making some money in here. Uh- then I had a dude, so I went back to Memphis. He was hating on me. Why he gonna tell my mama? What your mama say? Ooh. She was mad. So what was the point that led you to <laughs> dancing? I think just curiosity because I'm not one of them people that could say, I struggled and I was I had to dance. I I really did not. Would messing you be around. okay if your daughter wanted to dance and all that too? She won't have to. But you didn't have to. You did it out of curiosity. Yeah. That's a good point. What up? Hey, yo. Now, see, you wait, tried it. Wait. Why it's would his you birthday, try it? Like, you right. He's hungover. Go ahead, BT. Okay. Uh, as you know, BT. <laughs> now, say it with your chest. Since you want as to- you know, BT, listen, it's my <laughs> yeah. birthday. And um, last night, I was, um, I drank too much water. All right. How uh, much alcohol did Bow Wow try to make you drink? He didn't try to make me drink nothing. Oh, okay. He, he bought the bottles last night, though. So he, he didn't make you. How much he spent on the bottles? $3,000? Huh? He spent three k. I think it was like three thousand dollars. I think it Where was. Where that three thousand dollars come from? I don't know. A little girl, a little ten year old. Oh shit! That's <laughs> over been messy. <laughs> hey, your world is too solo. We got a special guest in the building, Dom Peace, Jessica Dom. Yeah. What up, Dom? Hey. Memphis in the building. Yes, Memphis, Memphis in the is building right now. Yeah. Yes, I love my city. We don't. We going up. Yeah, I y'all lit it. right now. I'm loving it. Vanessa I'm proud Times, of everybody. NLE Chopper, mm-hmm. Low Rilla, mm-hmm. Jessica Dimes. Yeah. Now, speaking of Memphis, uh, NLE Chopper just got his first number one on the radio. Yeah, oh, yeah shout out yeah. to yeah. 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 Works for Warner. Yep. You know, he's by his uh, wife's side right now. Ferrari wishes he could be here. Yeah. Uh, he's by his wife's side, and they're uh, about to have a, a baby. Oh, so yeah. Another yeah. Another yeah. 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 She's about to have about a baby. That's why the intro yeah. was a little messed up because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> any day now that mom. she's expecting any day now so shout out to Ferrari but he did get his first yes. number one yep. uh, hit record with NLE Chopper on Urban Radio mm-hmm. Ain't got, ain't Gonna Answer feature Lil Wayne yep. so he did a great job with yeah, that shout he out to Wonder Records congratulations yeah. Wonder Records has been working that record they've been at they the radio have. station they've been doing events with us like but most importantly like the people love what NLE Chopper is doing right now so congratulations friend and hey Ferrari I love you I miss you yeah alright Jessica Dime you're gonna be hosting the show with us so we got a little mm-hmm. segment called in case you missed it and we're actually into it right now because BT's just jumping the gun he's just all over the place right? I'm sorry okay, I'm ready yeah, I'm just in case you missed it Okay, let's right. go. Go, let's Shout go. Shout out to LeBron. LeBron, uh, he just came out with a statement thanking everybody for the prayers. You know, his son mm-hmm. suffered cardiac arrest at uh, his practice. That was his first practice, right? Yeah, that was his first practice. Wow, yeah. yeah. So, and um, it has to do with, uh, is it the same thing Shaq's son did, Sharif? No, Shaq's son actually had a, um, he had a heart uh, problem. Okay. So, he had to actually get um, heart surgery. Mm-hmm. Okay. This was like... You know, nobody really knows what happened or what's going on. Right, he's presumed to be healthy. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad, you know, uh, Bronny's doing well. And, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, big shout out to LeBron and Savannah for updating us and oh, let us yes. know what's going on. And, yeah. you know, um, I just hope they kind of, you know, give us a little insight. I think he, he also mentioned in his post that he was going to tell us a little bit more information whenever, mm-hmm. you know, Whenever they get over that. I think an 18-year-old going into cardiac arrest is very scary. Like, I don't think you ever think that about your teenage child. So, um, I'm not going to lie, though. I was wondering if maybe LeBron felt... Like obligated to put out Jamie a statement Fox. out so fast because of the Jamie Foxx thing. How right, everybody was like, right. "Sir, you just outside. You not gonna thank us for the prayers and all that." So I don't. I, I, I don't think LeBron owes us anything. I don't yeah, think I they think owe us any statement needs to respect. Yeah, you know, but I do family. appreciate him updating us and yes, letting us know what's going on. Because we were just concerned because it's like bro, we came up with him. He mm-hmm. came up with us yep. as a child. We know him, so we concerned. We want to give our prayers and let him know and Savannah know that we're behind them 100%. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we want to respect their privacy and space and just kind of 
wait on them to give us more updates. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about it. How do you feel about, um, about the fans, you know, wanting, demanding Jamie Foxx for mm. him to come out and say something? That's like our uncle. Like, we right. like, what is going <laughs> on? We want to know. I wanted to know. But when, when he started coming out and we started seeing him out, that was probably like his way of saying, I'm okay, y'all. Mm. But not just necessarily wanting to speak at that, at that moment. I know. I know how he... I would never know how Jamie Foxx feels, but I'm saying I know how to how it is to be kind of known and outside and in the spotlight. And you might not just I'm not feeling all the way myself to get on Instagram and say anything or any. I went through a lot, yeah. you know, and I don't want to talk about it yet. But I do appreciate appreciate him for finally coming forward and saying something. Oh, and I only brought up Sharif because Sharif had just uh, was on ABC and he was saying that he spoke to Bronny. I talked to Bronny, you know, I sent him a message. And I just said, any questions you have, you can ask me because I can probably answer them for you. Shaquille O'Neal's son, Sharif, is a fellow second generation star in the making. But he also knows what it's like to take on a grueling heart health battle. At 18, he underwent open heart surgery to correct his coronary artery. I know people are going to be saying they're um, praying for you and all that. You kind of just don't want to hear too much about it at the moment. I think as an athlete, like my brother was an athlete. He p- played every sport. And then mm-hmm. when his health failed, he didn't know who he was anymore. Like right. he just was lost. Like you could see the depression. So I think, you know, athlete to athlete, that that was a cool moment. Yeah, that you know, is. Young That's man super to young dope. Man. Like my husband, he, you know, my husband's an NBA 14 years and that takes a toll on their bodies. They're mm-hmm. young. They're just now getting started. My husband is now, you know, dealing with things from in playing ball so long mm-hmm. that they just physically have to endure mm-hmm. from just being so hard on their bodies and working out, practice every day, stuff like that. So you never know what Bernie's body is going through. That was his first practice. He's probably been practicing really, really hard. Mm-hmm. You know, you just don't know because the athletes, they they really go through a lot. They His go through a lot. was mm-hmm. pumping. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some people were saying that they think it may have something to do with the COVID-19 vaccine. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people feel like, you know, it was rushed. It came out. We don't know how it's how people are going to respond to it. Are you one of the people that think the COVID-19 vaccine wasn't really given what it needed to give? Um, Yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to be honest because I feel like it came to like all the other vaccines that have been successful have been able to be tested over time and we, we knew what the side effects were over time but with the COVID vaccine it was kind of like a rush because everybody was just trying to figure out but once they told me that I would still get it even if I took the vaccine I just was like well what's the point yeah. you know mm-hmm. I don't want to put my body through that and then I don't even know what this is yet Y'all don't even really know what this is yet. I don't know what it is. You know, so I just wanted to wait it out until it was further, you know. Developed. Yeah. Yeah, developed. And and, and they did a little bit more testing on it because it was just a little bit quick for me. It's going to be 20, 30 years from now. And it's going to be one of those commercials. If you suffered from from growing a fifth eye. And then it was so many of them that came out. So many. Uh, variants of the mm-hmm. of the of the um, COVID. So it was like once you take the vaccine for this, then it's like you still get this, but you need to go back and refresh with this. Right. It was just mm-hmm. too much for me. Yeah. You know, I got two kids, and they always were asking me, "Are you gonna get the shot? Are you gonna, when I go to the doctor, are you gonna get the kids?" Oh wow! Um, I just. I'm just not ready. I don't, the, uh, the NBA had to get it. Yeah, they um, had to get it, but not only, not not only the NBA. NBA. No more. Okay. People were getting fired from their jobs. Yeah, from and I it. wasn't on doing reality TV at the time. I know a lot of them had to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And if they won, they were getting tested every second of the day, from my understanding. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't really go through it. I was just kind of ducked off at home with my kids, with, with my daughter. I, I wasn't pre- it was like I got pregnant at the end, mm. sort of like, but with my son. But yeah, it was it was definitely different. Well, you know, it's uh, well, definitely different. Best, um, Tina Knowles Lawson. It's just Tina Knowles now. Uh, she wow. had a uh, five from a divorce. Why are you looking like that? <laughs> Who the hell robbed Beyonce, Mama? Mm. 
Well, she. Well, I was gonna oh, say Tina. Oh, knows you talking about her house? Uh, that, that's where I'm stuck at. She officially divo- uh, filed for divorce yeah. from her husband. That's uh, a lot. Richard Lawson. That's a lot. The robbery and filing for divorce in the same week. Like you know my mind. I'm like, hmm. I wonder if her trifling ass husband husband has something to do with her getting robbed, and so she had to file for divorce, or maybe his family trifling. My mind is going everywhere. But who the hell robbed Beyonce, Mama? Though that's, that's mm. this is what I need to know. I think that's common in L. A. I think home invasions are, are yeah. extremely I think the bigger common. question is who's holding Beyonce a million dollars in cash? Beyonce in mama. In their house? In their house. Beyonce Ooh. mama. I mean, listen, That's you got to save for a rainy now. day. That's what I'm saying. You got to save for a rainy day. You never know you what You know they happen. say the bank's going to close up on us yeah. one day. We ain't going to be able to get no money right, listen, out man. for a little while. Well, she is old school. They used to hide uh, money and mattresses. Exactly. All type of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all better have some cash saved up somewhere. <laughs> That's the only... I know she got stuff stashed probably in multiple corners of that house. You're lucky you, w- you only went away with a million dollars. Like, but that's sad, though. Is it, this This is her uh, second marriage, right? Yeah, this is her second marriage. And um, a lot of people are saying and speculating that they kind of knew it went downhill when they did this show called Black Love. Oh, and yeah. um, oh, I she, didn't was, see that. she was explaining how um, she... Prayed for a husband or prayed for a mm-hmm. man in her life, and her husband at the time she she looked over at Richard and said he's not perfect, and then she was proceeding, and he was like, "Wait, I'm not." Like, you know, he kind of took offense to that. And, and mm. Was of, he being funny or was he actually offended? No, he looked offended oh. because the camera kind of stayed on him, and we were able to see his reaction. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. No. Yes, no. no. And a lot of people are like, "Well, that's where it went downhill from there." Mm. What's well, a lot of divorces going on? I done seen like. Well, they least- say that that show was cursed. Oh. Like they they went and like showed I saw it on Instagram. Well, let me make morning. sure I'm going. Yeah, avoid that one. For <laughs> they were like all they were showing all these beautiful black couples that had gone on the show and mm-hmm. then ended up getting a divorce. Oh no! But that was kind of the thing with reality TV in general, though. I feel like people were saying like people that took their relationships on reality TV, no matter what the platform was, mm-hmm. were bound for divorces. Well, mm-hmm. you never heard that when you were doing reality TV. I heard it, but I think it's different strokes for different folks. Mm-hmm. You know. When you get that sort of type of bond and friendship with your partner, I think whatever's going to happen, going to happen anyway. I think reality TV just brings certain stuff to the forefront Mm -hmm. if a person being sneaky and need to get found out anyway. I think that does. Mm -hmm. But if if everybody doing what they're supposed to do and, and being honest with each other I feel like being like I was on reality TV with my husband and we were good we good yeah. we still good right now yeah you gotta be in cahoots so, with each other and yeah cause, you can't just let them play with you like that now we're not gonna do yeah, that yeah like you gotta be like you gotta understand what's going on because mm-hmm. a lot of times the stuff that you see on reality TV is that um, you know the producers are controlling a lot of things behind the yes. scenes but when you locked in with who you, who you with mm-hmm. you're gonna be like man they gonna do this but we, we, we might turn up a little bit for unless TV you, but yeah we, we might like, give them a little song yeah, like we know what it yeah. is but though. we know what's going on yeah. unless yeah. you with like a Peter Guns or a Stevie J oh lord <laughs> You, you be knowing saying. what to say to make my face make a face. Like, you know exactly you what to fast, say. You get exposed real fast, I'm just saying. <laughs> you get exposed real oh, fast. Uh, another person. Did, did you and um, Lil Mama, when y'all were dating on um, reality TV, did y'all ever talk about, like, what you wanted to do off camera? Well, first of all, we we never dated. We met each other um, mm. at a, at an event. Y'all went and, on a date, though. Huh? There. But that that date wasn't planned. That's That was, like, the producers, you know. You was messing with Lil Mama? Yep. No, and it was losses pop. So, so I did. Really? So I did. How was that? So I did. Grown up hip hop Atlanta. I did uh, two seasons with them, and one of the scenes that a lot of people was talking about was when uh, we went on like a blind date or something like that. But okay. that's something like the producer set up. And, and, I know and how I, that is. And I knew it was something because you know when I get my call sheet, it'll be like, okay, we're filming here. These are the people that's gonna be there. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know that particular scene was like I didn't have I didn't have nothing, so it was just like, yo, this is the time you filming today, mm-hmm. and this is the location. I'm like, yo, where where is this? Uh, you know, uh, we we trying to figure out the right location. And I get there, and then it's like, the, you know, it's she there, and yes. then, but it was but it was like never set up like that. Like it was just like you know, y'all met. I think you guys are great on camera together, and. That like that's what it was. So you ain't never like little mama or nothing. 
No, I never, I never knew her like that. Oh, see, I, I went through that. It's too like long if TV you, it's though. like if you what meet. Was, what was your experience? Well, um, they sent me up. They wanted to like send me up with Scrappy one time. I knew of Scrappy, but I didn't know him like that. And they wanted me to, you know, act like I liked him or whatever. However, it went, but. It wasn't like that because I I never would have you know dealt with him in on a re- real life basis, mm-hmm. but I was just doing what the producers mm-hmm. set up for me to do mm-hmm. to get storyline or whatever. But that was who it was. It was with Scrappy. Okay. Mm-hmm. But that's why I respected growing up hip hop because it was never like I feel like when I was doing that show, it was never like they was uh, trying to like tell me to do something that I want to do. It's like, mm-hmm. you meet somebody for the first time and then, you know, producers, they have an eye. They like, okay, mm-hmm. this looks Let's dope. try to put this together. Yeah, this, look, mm-hmm. this looks dope on camera. This like chemistry. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they doing what producer does yeah, to make and things they be great me- for TV. They be being messy too. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah some, so. some producers can be messy, <laughs> but that's when you as talent have to got, decide. You got you to gotta, gotta decide what you're willing to do and what you're willing to to not mm-hmm. do for, for TV. Mm-hmm. You got to be really willing to do what you want to do. That part. Give yeah. them what I, you want to give them. I remember yeah. that scene. It was just on YouTube not too long ago with you and Jocelyn in the scene and uh, about her throwing the money and, mm-hmm. and you know, the, the producers or whoever came out and escorted you guys, broke you guys up. You mm-hmm. know. How hard is it to kind of st- keep your composure in moments like that? Well, that was like my, one of my first uh, big scenes on the network, and I was just coming in, and they had told me that I couldn't fight. They was like, "If you fight, we gonna have to let you go." Da 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 da. But just going forward with learning, I know why they did, why they said what they said, because they knew what type of person I was outside of TV. So I felt like I was like, "Dang!" At the moment, you have to kind of think of what you can do to. Turn the moment around for your benefit mm. okay. to where you don't feel like nobody got they one up on you or whatever. Because I felt like shit, it was a it was a good scene. You know, it was like one of the best scenes. So I, you just have to be on your p's and q's with them. That scene was set up like that. Yeah. They, they never wanted me to be able around. to touch her. You know what I'm saying? That's you know she was the star of the show at that point in time so they weren't gonna really let nothing go down when you really think about it yeah. so that's why that like, big thing was in the middle right. it was like it was a total setup for yeah, sure. you, you it wasn't gonna, they, be, they they it was, gonna be no knew, smoke they already knew what she was gonna do they but knew I what that like, energy was gonna be I for sure I felt like mm-hmm. your, your dime dropping moment was when you said you know you I'm gonna run you out of here like such and such ran you out of <laughs> town the first time <laughs> I felt like now that was a jab <laughs> it's still driving. Look how she laughing. <laughs> it's so crazy because me and her are cool now. So it, to go back and look at how it was all done and handled, it's funny because it's just like I just only said what came to my mind that I thought about that because I, I knew her for real. Mm-hmm. So that's the thought that came to my mind at the time is like I know this about you and this, you know what I'm saying? So. It, it, it was that they did that. The the production produced that. <laughs> yeah. Because when I when I and I I talked to her a while ago and I apologized to her because I felt like it was all a setup from the beginning when I got casted for Love and Hip Hop. They knew who I knew and who I didn't know. And I asked them, I was like, Well, can I tell them I'm excited? Can I tell them I got picked? Hell no. Can't tell Jocelyn, but you can tell K Michelle. Oh. So it was like, okay, cool. Because they really weren't going to do nothing to tell K. Michelle because K. Michelle really wasn't in it like that. She The she season I came in, yeah, the season I came in, she was out already. But we still were friends at that time. Okay. So they was like, it was like they kind of pitted us against each other in the in the background. So they so brought you ways. on as a villain. In so many ways they did. They tried to. Mm-hmm. But I just know how to, I'm just, I'm an all-around smart person so I knew how to kind of turn it around mm-hmm. and just make it like okay this is not what it is this is what it is and I was never pressed about they just always made it a storyline made it like oh she's pressed because she doesn't know who she is I know for a fact she know who I am I, this is not a question everybody but in Miami and I, but to the audience looking at love and hip hop they looking at like oh she really don't know her she's just pressed to know her and da 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 no that's the only thing that I didn't like but 
the way she played it is how she played it because she probably looking at it like, yeah, I do know you, but you should have told me you was on this damn show. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, so I, I had to... that ass. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so I had to look at it in both ways because I really wanted to tell her, but I wasn't finna lose my opportunity right. either. Yeah. So, you know, right they, play, they play that game. Yeah. But we both uh, handled it well. We gave them TV. We gave them entertainment mm. and we still um, cool and... Like she said, we bond now to this day. So, I, you know, it is what it is. And I feel like that was like the golden era of love and hip hop. Mm, like, I loved it. Yeah. Mm. yeah it Stevie J, Jocelyn, yeah. you. Yeah. Mimi, a- Rashida. Yeah, that, mm. that was like the golden era. Carly. Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It gave what it was supposed to give. It so, did. knowing Jocelyn before love and hip hop and then building, I guess, the relationship during and, and after. Has Jocelyn always been so like sporadic or reactionary? Like, not, I mean, I mean, probably yeah. Before I made it to Miami, mm-hmm. you know, she was there before me, so mm-hmm. I came from Memphis. So I mean, yeah, probably then, but I didn't see it. You know what I mean? Like I, I haven't seen. I didn't see her in it. Like when I when I met her and was dancing with her and she finally came back from she was somewhere else and came back to Miami for a little while but she wasn't that's why I said the things I said when I got into her on TV because it's I didn't know that side of her but everybody has different sides mm-hmm. everybody handles shit I mean stuff different ways so oh, okay everybody handles shit different ways so you just you you I feel like she one of them people you get what you give. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, but I think but she intensifies I, it though. It's like you give me a little bit of shade, baby. I'm about to I'm about to tear you up. Like I don't think she is a she don't play even. Mm-hmm. She gonna finish it. Mm-hmm. Like like whatever it is that you throw at her, that that woman is a finisher. Yeah, you but that come from like the lifestyle we all kind of mm-hmm. lived in. Because we had to be like this. We yeah. just had um Gigi on the show. Mm-hmm. Like she you know said I she love used to Gigi. dance with you. And, yep. And um Jocelyn and she said that Jocelyn has always been like that. Yeah, and Gigi probably know better than me. Okay. Because I just I'm she I, that's why I didn't. I understand why she did what she did, but I didn't understand because she was always nice to me. Okay. She would, when we danced together, and she used to come back from at where she was at and come to Miami. Oh, and I was, yeah, Jocelyn. She was she was still doing drugs. Oh, wait, no, she's listen. talking about. I didn't say nothing about no drugs. <laughs> she's talking about how she treated her back when they was dancing. That's what I'm saying. Oh, are you asking was she doing drugs back then? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't because back people then don't in my drugs can drugs can change people. Yeah, true. Oh, I do like, think. I, I see what you're you know saying. What like, saying. Was like, she the same person? Oh, you saying? Oh, you saying? Was she? Because she has said she does do drugs. So. Yeah, she admitted to that yeah, she was doing but drugs. I, well, I don't know. I don't know if there's something she got into later on. There's something mm-hmm. you had to ask her. I'm not sure. I didn't see her doing none. But when she was around you, she was pleasant, and she was yeah, like, she was always cool or whatever. But it has, you know, I've seen her have situations. You know, where she did have altercations and stuff with other people, but she never handled it the way I see her handling it now. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It could be so much that goes into that, though. It could just be, you know, access to different resources, like living a celebrity lifestyle, being on TV, having a million people on social media talking crazy to you. And maybe you just accidentally release your anger and frustrations in other and, ways and also if you do drugs you know people That's, people I mean, start acting crazy man because you know i've seen the the uh the behind the scenes after the fight and how she yeah. was like acting crazy With towards the cops. the cops and i was like come on hey man i just see people get mad but i'm like to take it there <laughs> it was like it's a, I, it seemed like it was just a lot going on that night because yeah she DM'd me and was like, did I see you at the fight? And I was like, no. Wait, uh, she DM'd you after the fact the whole... <laughs> and she was like, I thought I saw you. I saw a girl with some pink hair and I thought you didn't speak to me. And I'm like, nah, why would see, I not speak try to, to you? you too. <laughs> no, she <laughs> wasn't. She was like, she was like, she was like no, we've been bun. And I would, she was like, oh, I, I was thinking you didn't speak to me or something. I was like, nah, baby, I wasn't at the fight. The way she was snatching random people, girl, I... Oh my lord! Nah, she wouldn't have did that to me, but I. It, it, she just. She's not, she I think probably it was, not to do that. To I you. think that no, all that all just intensified. I don't know what happened. 
I wasn't there to say what happened, but I know it was a lot of bickering and back and forth between yeah. the two parties for a long time. So you never know. We seen what happened. The body camera showed us everything. What happened? <laughs> I know it Speaking was Speaking of back crazy. and forth, and this being in case you missed it, you were just recently on the blogs for about the Nicki Minaj thing and how she said, uh, you know, those love and hip hop checks. Mm. Uh, I guess she downplayed them. And yeah, that was were, funny. <laughs> yeah, and you was like, well, you could still, you know, you could still have smoke with her. That was a um. I talked to Kyle after the neighborhood talk, mm -hmm. and they took it down because it was a live I was just on the other morning, and somebody asked me about her. And I just told them, um, you know, then, yes, I wanted to fight and stuff like that because, you know, when people say certain things, where I'm from, it's just fighting words. But um, I was saying, I'm over it now. It's like so long ago. I'm doing other shit now. I don't really got time to be worried about mm -hmm. Nicki Minaj. Right. I would never see her probably. If I did see her, it's not like she gonna tell security to move and fight me. Right. You know, they're not, <laughs> you know, she's not, that's, so it's like not even a legitimate beef. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, cause she really didn't do nothing to me. I didn't do nothing to her. When I said what I said on Twitter, I said, damn, Nicki, what's wrong with them love and hip hop chicks? But I had always, I was in B's in the trap video. Okay. So I had always been had like a little cool relationship with the barbs on Twitter. We would check people, talk about people, and be on laughing and talking and joking. So I was saying it as a joke, but when she got wind of what I said, she responded how she responded. And it was like a little back and forth exchange, but I, like I told Kyle, I said it was like weird that y'all put that caption with the live because I stand on whatever I say. I didn't say I still want to fight her. I said I don't care to fight her anymore. It's like... Why did you want to fight Nicki Minaj? Because of what she said after the fact. After the fact of that. She gotcha. gained, became real disrespectful after she said, what's wrong with a love and hip-hop check? Oh, gotcha. Nikki responded really disrespectful. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Then okay. it made it like fighting words, what gotcha. she said. Gotcha. So it was okay. like, ooh, like, where you at? But it's like, that's Nicki <laughs> Minaj. Like, <laughs> <in Memphis. laughs> right? It's like... I'm not gonna see her. Like it's not. I, my, if I did, it wouldn't be a okay. Let's square up and fight type right, thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was like, Do you yep. think Nicki Minaj is like? There's just so much that seems to be floating around. And obviously, you cannot take everything you hear on the internet as facts or mm -hmm. truth, right? I done heard stuff about myself that I didn't even know. You like, well, thanks for telling me. Yeah, but. It, it seems like the media or the people in media are trying to paint this picture of Nicki Minaj not being very receptive to women. Like, she's not a girl's girl. Like, she's not opening the doors to all the, the young female artists that are coming in. For example, like a lotto. Like, people tend to kind of compare mm. Nicki and, and Lotto's uh, reception to young women. Do you feel like Nicki is kind of, like, gatekeeping or she's worried about her spot? Just imagine, like, okay, like, even me. I'm not even nowhere near a Nicki Minaj. But I have to watch who I fuck with. Mm -hmm. Like, I cannot go to Memphis and just start messing with this girl that rap, messing with this girl that want to do reality, messing with this girl that, you know, I just can't do that. And she can't do that. She cannot do a feature with everybody. She's going to pick who she like, and she going to do a feature with them. Or who she think can go, who she think going to what she like you know and i think she owns that right i don't think what she's doing is nothing wrong with it i don't think she got to go down and list and work with everybody i love lotto lotto is like a little sister to me and lotto was a big nikki fan so i guess not lotto felt that way you never know what transpired in nikki head where she felt like I'm not doing it with I don't it's it's not time. It, some stuff is just about timing too. Yeah, yeah. It's just not time for me to do a record with Lotto. I don't I'm not feeling it yet. You know? Mm -hmm. She might not have just been feeling herself. Mm -hmm. And then when you done came, then sometimes it'd be like, okay, I just really wasn't feeling myself. It really ain't had nothing to do with you. And then you come at me. Now I'm really not doing it. So it's you just right. never know. She a woman. She's a human being at the end of the You're day. Talking about the verse situation? Anything any I guess it was a situation where Lotto wanted Nikki to do a verse. Yeah. And Nikki was just like you, she ain't really Not she said she was trying to think of another record or they yeah. was trying to get another record going or whatever. However, you just never know. Mm-hmm. You just never know. But then, and then sometimes I done had situations where I done tried to bring people around me. And not saying Lotto would do this because Lotto, I love Lotto. I done been around Lotto a couple times and she always been sweet to me. So, but I have had situations where girls will 
come around me and I'm I'm just genuinely like you. You got something going on and you cute and got something going on. Come on. Come out with me. Whatever. And they'll literally try to do what I do after the fact. Like literally copy and paste and try to be me. Mm. And for whatever reason, they might have everything going for themselves. They might have this, this, that stuff I don't even got going on. But it's the fact of when I walk in here, they know you and they don't know me. Mm-hmm. And I want to be like that. Mm-hmm. Instead of just being an open person and saying, how can you help me to try to figure out how to... They'll try to throw shade and try to be like you and try to... And she, Nikki got to protect her brand and herself. If I was Nicki Minaj, I probably wouldn't. I don't fuck with bitches now. So I know if I was in that type of <laughs> shit, like a bitch couldn't come around. Like... It's just you. I gotta really feel you out first for a long time. People around you will tell you that about me now. Like I really gotta feel you, out. and then I might feel you out for a long time, and then not call you ever Still not again. Not like you. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's a good perspective. It's you know just what I'm like saying? the old Aaliyah saying, you know, I gotta watch my back because I'm not just anybody. Hello. Exactly. You that's know? all I think she lo- I think that's what it is with her. I don't think she gatekeeping. I don't think she no hater. Cause I'd have met her. She didn't come off as a hater. Did her people cast you for the bees in the trap? When, when she did bees in the trap video, she was just. I think people that was in her team just wanted girls that was known dancers mm-hmm. in Miami with a name and stuff okay. like that. So they contacted me and I went on. They did paid us and everything. Her? Yeah, I was sitting right next to her. Okay. Yeah, so she was cool, pleasant, talking, everything. Like it was. People was telling me before I went, don't talk to her. She's a bitch. Don't say nothing to her. But I, I Damn. give people to sign. Yeah, they were saying it. But that when when I got, but when I got there, she was not like that. She was like, sit by me. Mm. She was cool. So you you can't listen to what people say about people. That might have been how she treated them mm-hmm. in the environment they was in. Or that just may be something that they've heard. And they yeah. repeating it. Yeah, you because you never know what people are going through in their lives. Exactly. 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 I hear that all the time about certain celebrities. They be like, "Oh, don't talk to this person because this mm-hmm. person is like that." And then they be like, "I just went up and said what's up to this person. They was cool they as was hell." Cool. And then I got their number. Exactly. And, you know, we doing some business. It's a right definitely now, so. a different vibe. The energy um, might not have been in alignment. Exactly. You, know, you met this person. Exactly. Well, Jessica so. Dime, you are definitely a vibe, and we'll be right back for more of the Ball Alert show. Ball it's Jessica Dime, and you are now tuned in to the Baller Alert Show. Back with more of the Baller Alert Show. Jessica Dime is in the building. Is it still Dime Piece or is it Jessica Dime? What you going by? Whatever they call me. Okay. I'm a little bit of both. Is whatever. You? Okay, got yeah, you. Yeah, whatever. But we want to get to know you a little bit more, you know, and, and, you know, all the things that we discussed and in case you missed it. Like, how did all that stuff arise? You know, take us back to Memphis and, um, you know, how did you grow up? What led you to to who you are now? Mm. Well, Memphis is small, so it's it's a it's a small t- town, but it's big. Like it's like a big at heart type town. So, um, I grew up um, with my mom, but my dad he was kind of like in and out of jail, but he got out. Um, when I was like in the fifth, sixth grade, so he's been active everything in my life. Even then, before he got out, he was active in my life. But you know how they have issues and they go to jail, whatever, whatever. But my mom always was there. Um, she's a teacher, so I always she was kind of strict, but I still lived the normal, you know, teenage life. We wasn't like hurting for nothing. We was, you know, middle class, nice house. Grew up good. Um, was it just you by yourself? Or you I'm my family? mama's only child. I got brothers and sisters on my daddy's side, but not my mom. So it was just me in the house. Okay. So that's another thing. You know, being a single, I mean, being an only child, you get a little bored. It was mm-hmm. getting a little boring. But I always had cousins and stuff, and i go to South Memphis and be with my daddy and play with my cousins and play with my friends over in the neighborhood. And, and I always was way around it because I always had, like, my mama's side and my daddy's side so it was fun like Memphis was fun growing up we all went out we clubbed you know stuff like that it was like everybody know everybody so I'm pretty known where I'm from like what side is this of town you grew up on I grew up in Whitehaven and South Memphis so it's like they call it Black Haven now but Black Haven and South Memphis that's my stumping ground that's like where I'm from in Memphis how okay. old were you when you went to your first 21 and up club Oh, uh, <laughs> I wasn't 21 yet. 
I was like 19. Okay. Because I used to one. use my friend ID and she was older than me. So in time, I used to be at the casino. We got casinos by mm. Memphis too. <laughs> I used to be at the casino, I all the clubs. Because she kind of looked like her a little bit. So I was like, let me get that ID, extra ID. So I used to still be outside and I wasn't supposed to be outside. Was it weird? Okay, so I went to my first 21 Nut Club when I was 19. Mm-hmm. And I immediately felt out of place. I looked at myself. I was like, girl, what are you wearing? Look at what these women got on. Oh, my God. No, I, I did I not. I was ready because <laughs> the club, like, where I'm from, it was the premiere. So there was a club that you, like, grow up. You know everybody. Like, that's where you dream to go one day. Like, that's mm-hmm. like the... I'm going to the premiere one day, so that I was ready. Mm-hmm. Like I was ready. I was always <laughs> fresh, head to toe. Don't play with me and my friends. We coming through. Like mm-hmm. we coming through. We got all the old club pictures. We got our bags. We got our bottles. <laughs> Everybody got their bottles. We did. Th- we did. Like growing up, I I can't say like I didn't ball for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like I've okay. been a ball oh, a long time. time. It's been a long time. <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, what the, uh, so what was the point that led you to dancing? Um, I think just curiosity because I'm not one of them people that can say I struggled and I was I had to dance. I I really did not. Like I was I went to college for two years. I went to college at University of Memphis, then I went to Lamont on college. So I went to college and I tried the college thing, but I I'm smart, but I don't like sitting there going to class every day. Like the lecture. Yeah, I can't do that. But I I know what y'all are talking about, but I don't have time for it. I want to go somewhere. <laughs> but I feel like money led me to dancing, but it was also curiosity because I could have got money from any type of place but it was like the fast money and then okay so when I was in Memphis and in college I used to work at my family restaurant and it's a barbecue spot in the airport so it was fast money working at the airport because you're a waitress but your tables turn out uh, over so fast we leave and work with hundreds of dollars as a waitress that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. so I'm looking at like oh shoot I got this nice little apartment of course my mom and dad helped me with my dad more so because my mama once I ain't, once I ain't say college and then she ain't see that college going all the way through, it was downhill for me and her. Mm-hmm. She was like, she didn't understand that yeah. going my own path. And her being a teacher, I'm sure that yes, education was so important. Exactly. So that's what that was. And then, but I still went my own way. It is what it is, you know. She ended up being proud of the decisions that I made mm-hmm. in the in the way I turned out because I still kept my my morals and stuff even though I was down in Miami dancing I still was kept a class about myself so and you're a mom now so you can understand that she was the, yeah I understand some thing. of the stuff honey yeah. Jesus. Nah, I love what was some of the stuff that you didn't understand at the time <laughs> with my mama um, some of the strictness cause she was really strict but she did let me she wasn't one of them uh, mommy dearest now don't get me wrong but she was very strict in my teenage life cause it was like don't bring me no babies Mm. Don't bring me no babies. Don't bring me no babies. Don't bring me this. All she preached, don't That's bring her though. no babies. <laughs> but it went to the extreme of she made sure I didn't bring no babies. So it's like... How did she do that? I feel like um, certain ways she made me stay in the house so mm-hmm. I couldn't go to... Like, like in high school, they had like the clubs you can go to when you won 21. Mm-hmm. High so, school clubs. Yeah, like, yeah. So I used to be wanting to go out. She wasn't having it. She let me have my own phone lines and stuff like that. She even let me have a boyfriend. Let him come over my house. She let me do prom. She let me do stuff like that, but not too much. Like, not too much leaving and, and just staying out, and she don't know what's going on. And I'm appreciative t- for it, now, too, at the same like a time. that concerned mother, not yeah. a strict mother. She, strict, she was strict, though, because some of the stuff you can, with, with blessing, I understand I'm going to be strict. I'm strict now. But... You gotta kind of let people grow up. You yeah, gotta kind of let people go crazy go. in college. Yes, <laughs> and then look at me. I'm in college. I'm in there, but I'm smoking in the dorm. I'm doing yeah, because what I you're do. Doing all the I was, things that you was I never was ready experienced. to do anyway. Yeah, that's why I always tell people like you know even even with my sister. Uh, my nephews always be like, man, let them experience life at a younger age so when they do become an adult, they know what they like and what they don't like. Because if you strict, like when I was in college, I wasn't in college long either. Mm-hmm. I was there for six months. You was ready to get outside. I, I wasn't, my, my mama wasn't strict on me, but the girls that I met in college that I knew in high school, I was like, whoa. They turned up. Whoa. Couldn't wait to get out. Yeah. 
So when you was at the, did somebody introduce you to dance? It was your friends doing it or? Okay, so in college, I did the college dance for a couple years, but then um, I ended up coming to Atlanta for just just to kick just to kick shit or whatever. And I went to Blue Flame with one of my homeboys. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. Well, you go to the dance And I had on some boots like this. They was black leather. I just told the story. And I was in Blue Flame. I was like, they making some money here. I you sound like somebody from Memphis. They making some money in here. I wanted to see what they was doing. Like I was like, well, this is cute. But my homeboy was like, you finna... What he was like? What you finna do? I said, I think I want to dance. He was like, Nah. I said, Yes. I think I want to try it. And he was like, Damn. I I said, I'm finna go. So I asked somebody about it. I was like, You can. I said, I need an outfit though. The girl was like, You can't. You got to dance. And I was like, I need one. She was like, The house mom got some. Why the house mom had a leather outfit match my leather thighs just the same. I danced in regular boots my first night dancing. Was your body already like your like it is right now? Uh uh-uh. uh, I didn't have nothing. Okay. I mean, but I was still fine. Now I'm Memphis bred. I, I was right. never flat booty, flat chest. I always had big old. My husband was like, "You been had big titties? Like it's been <laughs> like that." I had to take him down some, but I've been n- nice shaped up. Okay. But I got my shape together a little bit as long, you know, as I went further. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I bought the outfit from the house oh mom. My God. <laughs> went out there and danced. Can y'all believe this? In regular boots. At but the they were style highs. At the blue flame. How much money did you make your first day? I made a lot of money. I made like probably like about $800, $900. That was a lot for me then. So but that's a lot for anybody lot, right yeah. now. At blue flame. But guess what? I got in trouble the first time I worked in there. They did not want me to come back no more. They was like, we don't want you to come back. The people are complaining about you. I was like, what did I do? They said I was charging too much for the dancers because the dancers was $5. And I was refusing the $5. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it unless you give me 10 or more or make it rain. Oh, oh my God. So you went to the blue flame. But that was that rule. But I'm this is my first time dancing. I'm not doing shit for $5. Yeah, no. Nah, you, you like Fire me, here. bitch. Right. First I'm time I'm my body. Yeah. You you pay up. <laughs> Fran, you, you went to the blue flame as a customer. And started dancing. Right. Nobody there. didn't make me tell me nothing. I did that on my own. Were you drunk, high, completely sober? I was always, I'm always smoking. <laughs> but I, I wasn't on nothing. I wasn't, I ain't never really been a big drinker like yeah. that. But I I do drink, but that's just your personality. You just yeah. Outgoing. I was just like, damn, they making money. I want to see what's. I don't know what. Ma- I had oh already my. been hearing about Atlanta and the dancing and stuff, and mm. I'm down there. I'm down here, touristing and just outside. I ain't no kids then, nothing like this. I could kind of move and do whatever I wanted to do. Oh my so honey, I went crazy. and started dancing at Blue Flame, and then I had a dude. So I went back to Memphis. This dude, he was. He was hating on me. Why he gonna tell my mama that I was dancing? And how I old was, were you at this time? I was, I was twenty two. What your mama say? Ooh. She was mad because first of all, he was all way older than me, mm-hmm. so she already didn't like him anyway. Tell your Jesus. mama or you. She he told my mama. Was he in like his thirties or something? Yeah, she felt like that was too old for him to be even messing with me anyway. Yeah. So I was like. Ever like he was, you know, a DJ and stuff like that. I was like, okay, you know. So now you win the life. Uh, what are <laughs> mm-hmm. some of your uh, funniest moments in that in that lifestyle? Dancing. Oh, it's been so many. The fights, honey. Uh, the money, like as far as like the most money made night type month nights. Like it's been, it's been a lot of it's been a roller coaster ride. Even like. The things that happen in the club between me and the girls, you know, stuff like that. It's all been a big learning experience. Like I just, I became dying piece in the strip club. So it's like, who who would ever knew? What that name come from? Uh, my friend Kim named me Dying Peace because when I first came, remember I said I was in Atlanta first. Mm-hmm. So it was a girl. She was from Memphis, but she danced in Atlanta and she was in Magic City. She was like real popping. Mm-hmm. So her name was Promise. So I wanted to name myself Promise once I started actually dancing. So I was Promise when I was floating around dancing and stuff like that. But when I got to Miami, my homegirl flew me out there. And long story short took me to this club called Take One and she was like we making money in Miami come on down I'll let you borrow the flight money get back to me if you make money mm-hmm. whatever so I came on down and she was like um 
They was like, so what's your name? And I was like, promise. They was like, we already got a promise. And so I was like, oh, well, shit, what I'm going to be? So Kim, my friend, she was like, I think your name should be Dime Peace. She from Memphis, too. She right, like, right. I think your name should be Dime Peace. I was like, what? I said, well, shit, I just do it. I need it. something, girl. Yeah, I got to go with it tonight, and I done been with it ever since. Really? Oh my What's the most money that you've ever made mm-hmm. dancing? In one night? Yeah. Probably like about $13,000. That's great. Right. Was it your birthday or something? Retirement party? Um, it was, it's been a couple of times. It's been there a couple. It's been I up in that area a few couple. It's Who's been up in, in the area a couple. One time, wasn't even my birthday. It was a, um all-white party at King of Diamonds. And Jeezy came. Mm-hmm. But Jeezy didn't get there till like 3 or 4 in the morning. We was sitting there all night. <laughs> Y'all were in the store. Everybody man. had on white. All the customers <laughs> had on white. Everybody just looking nice and decked out. Everybody going on the stage, looking around, no money flying, nobody doing nothing. We was like, oh my God, we are not finna make no money. Like, Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? <laughs> so we like, oh, this is crazy. I'm telling you, when he walked in that door of King of Diamonds, they play all white everything. Remember that song here? We got it. Yep. It looked like snow. It was like a damn snowstorm. Like it, it seemed like the niggas that was they was in that section sitting there the whole time. They wouldn't dance, none of us. They wasn't they was sitting there like we ain't no Jesus, bitch. You not getting we shit. We ain't no Jesus you, too. You, you <laughs> like, you ain't money. But as soon as he walked in there, though, it was money everywhere. Like you could just dance and you was gonna get thousands. Cause it was just money everywhere. Oh, like Jesus but our particular rent, section, boy. it was probably like about seven or eight of us. When we got through, we we didn't leave from counter. So probably like 10 or 11 o'clock the next morning. Yes. Oh my Damn, and we God. Light outside. We just had Jeezy on the show. You yeah. should have asked him about that night. I bet he remembered it. He probably None of the girls nights. danced no, for him. No, he said, I remember nights I don't remember <laughs> nights. <laughs> and me too, Jeezy, because so that's he, he might not was remember. ridiculous. He, he, probably he didn't did even have to times. dance none of us. We was all in the crowd dancing for the Crowd, like he was not dancing none of us. It was a midget that used to dance the King of Diamonds. She was the she was the one dancing for him. <laughs> dance for Jesus mm-hmm. that night. So how was the camaraderie with the women that you experienced during your dancing? It was up and down, baby. We had a time. We used to fight. We used to ooh. What would y'all fight over? Money. I fought over money. They used to say I would fight over a dollar. But how does how does that work though? Like when. You know when y'all fighting over the it money. It used to like, be a lot. You know what it used to be a lot of. It used to be. A, yeah, it used to be the splits. It used to be a lot of girls come from out of town and don't know what's what and don't know how to act, and they'll get their ass whooped. But I feel, I feel like uh, the dance culture is is damn near like the gang culture. It is. It's like it's the like, street culture. Yeah, it's like, like yo, when the, they come here, they with me. You don't yeah. go over there and talk to Jeezy. You don't talk to none of these people. <laughs> When they come in here, they talk to me. And but talk- most of the people that come in there, they got their people that they fool with, they going to say, uh, we're dying, go get down for me. And then I'm going to bring my people to dance. That's how it used to be when I danced. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, whoever I, I'm cool with, they come in there, okay, Dan, pick some girls to come dance for me and my homeboys, whatever, whatever. And we the ones dancing. We ain't got to worry about arguing over the pile because we are homegirls. But it don't always work like this. Some, somebody in the group might like somebody over here, and we ain't going to hate on her. Come on, dance, mm-hmm. but we're going to pick this up and keep it moving. I seen a it lot was of a lie. It was rules that. to it, you know, so. I mean, I be saying hate But we used to fight now. over this. We used to fight. I used to fight over my money all the time it was never over no dudes it was never so it'd be, be like money. so it'd be like somebody come there and they spend money with you and then it'll be like a girl like she want a bigger percentage than you or something like that yeah i never understood how this yeah, I, yeah I, don't, I don't understand well, how that works either i remember i got into it with uh, tip jerry probably remember this it was so funny she was on stage dancing and i'm on the ground dancing but the dude is throwing money on both the stage and the floor mm. So I'm like, let me move mine over. But some of this fell from off the stage. So she like, no, bitch, that's mine. Oh. I'm going to pick it up. So we're fighting over this. This is a fight. So it's like, that's a fight. I used to fight over all money. Anything, something to do with money. Because <laughs> they apply, they play, especially the new girls, they don't know what's going on. They'll come try to play stupid, come get in the pile dancing, want to split at the end of the night, girl. You wasn't there. You know, it's just a lot. It's always something in the club. Always yeah. something. And that's what I had to deal with because I got my own show now called The Mint. So that's what I had to deal with with the girls in there. Like, I'm like, what era of dancing do y'all come from? It was just all over the place because... 
I'm trying to teach them this, teach them that. They know how they function and they world. It's just all over the place. How do the women stay clean in like dancing? Because I, I'm Ooh. sorry, y'all. So I, I love a good strip club. Yes. And I'm always like, Lord, she done pulled them draws down about six, seven, eight, ten times oh, tonight. How are hygiene. you staying clean, dry? Good Has hygiene. anybody ever farted like while like? I, Wait, these, what? these are the things I be wanting to know. Like, how are you twerking like that and like you didn't fart at all discharge. ever? That's what I'm saying. Like, there, there's no dish. There's nothing. It's, it just be clean and dry. I'm like, oh, okay. that's one of my rules at the mint. Good hygiene is a must. Like, like you have to. You're by outside. The way. Like you're, you're dancing the whole time. Like you're gonna work up a sweat. Are you taking a break? After every dance to go like freshen up. Yeah, you gotta go freshen up. Okay. You gotta go freshen up. And then, you know, um, you you change your clothes. You keep your clothes changed, you freshen okay. up, you got spray deodorant. You know, some girls cut their tampon string and put their tampon in to keep discharge from coming down. Oh. Or when they dancing on their cycle. Either or, you know. So, um, it's it's tricks and stuff that they do. You all wanna just take the week off when you on your cycle? I mean, they might have rent due. Yeah. I just think there's a hustle in there. Yeah. Ooh, okay. So what is the mint you were saying? <laughs> oh, the mint is my show on Now That's TV. That's an app, a streaming app. And um, it's 13. I got 13 anxiety dancers in one house. And they're they're trying to get out of the club sort of like my situation mm. I was dancing and then I started rapping and then Flo Rida and them signed me they said either you're gonna stop dancing or you're gonna sign which one is it so I picked to stop dancing so the girls that I picked they talented they rap they sing they act they got businesses they just all around stars and I just want to see them do good in the industry and I'm in the mint mode and then making them into what I feel mm. like they need to be to be successful and get to the ne next level it's like I'm still working to get to where I want to be, but I know it's things that I wish people would have told me or showed me that would have got me there quicker than I am now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just use this time to like bond with these girls, like try to show them, teach them, you know, rules of the game. And we had a time, but it was a lot, you know, it was a lot dealing with all of them and trying to keep things in order and stuff like that. Like even like what you said with the hygiene, I had to deal with that, smell checks and Stuff like that, like people coochies ain't right and stinking and like how are you talking about I looked I looked at the mint as like I wanna see how you function in the club right now first before I even think about what you finna do in the industry because that made me into what I am. Mm -hmm. So I wanna see how you handle are you a bitch that just be in the club just sitting there smoking hookah, you don't hustle like that? Mm -hmm. Or is you a bitch that walk around and ask everybody for a dance? You know, I just wanted to see before we even get in the house and and talk about anything or about you being a star. I want to see where you come from. Do you show the, I guess, like the hygiene inspection? Yeah, on the show? it's like, on there. It's on the auditions. It's out now on Now That's TV. Okay. The auditions episode is out. The season doesn't start till August the 27th. So my auditions episodes air, aired last Sunday. And I've been, the internet, it's been way crazier than I thought it was gonna be because people have such an opinion mm -hmm. on what I said and what I had light skin Keisha on the auditions as a judge drama boy Stewie Rock and they had such opinions on how we were handling the girls cause from the jump I said it's an empowering experience it's not like a experience where I'm belittling girls or doing anything like but but this the mint though. I'm making you and molding you into something. It's not gonna be easy. It's a competition. They win ten thousand in a chain, and I'm helping you to get to where you feel like you want to go. I'm trying to link you with people. I'm putting you with this person, mm -hmm. putting you know whatever, so I can do to help you be successful and get at the club. There's gonna be criticism. It's like, gonna, gonna be gonna, criticism yeah. if you come into the auditions and you don't. I had live auditions at Onyx. If you come into the auditions and your underarms not shaving, you don't want to show them and stuff like that. Then I don't know what. What you want me to do you could be fine as fuck but i can't do nothing with that because even if you say you rush whatever you did to get here you're a dancer yeah i mean that's first that's hygiene that's first i mean everybody just so mad about the way i talked to like the way we were joking and cracking up and y'all were tearing them down and y'all were doing this and doing that listen baby 
It's going to be worse in that nightclub. That but it's different than Jocelyn's cabaret. And that's something I wanted to explain to people, too. It's nothing like her show. Shout out to her. You know, that's that's what she got going on. She's four seasons in. I'm only an audition episode in. And it's been a comparison. And I think, I think that's do, crazy. I thinking that because y'all both are dancers. And right, y'all both, right. Like, but it's a difference if we talk about Jocelyn's cabaret and we talking about the men. The men is for them to get out. At Jocelyn's Cabaret, that's still dancing with her going on tour, which is a great opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. But my opportunity is I don't dance no more, so I can't take them on tour to dance still. Mm -hmm. I got a husband and, and stuff. Not saying you can't dance with a husband or whatever. I ain't I ain't really seen it successfully done, but you know, whatever, you. you know. So I'm the girls that I pick, they came to me because they look up to me. Mm -hmm. They, they didn't go to Jocelyn's Cabaret. So they came to the Mint. So my thing is to get them, try, try to transition them out of the club. Okay. So it's challenges. It's different things we doing in there. I'm letting them showcase their talent. talent. I'm trying to get to the root of issues they might have. Like, it's a lot going on yeah. in the Mint. So I'm glad you, you cleared that up. Yeah. Why do you call it the Mint? You remember, you, I'm Dime Peace. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people mistake my name for Diamond and stuff like that. My name is Dime Peace. I'm a dime. So it's like, where do dimes come from? Where are they made? They're made at the U.S. Mint. So that's oh. why I called my show The Mint. Okay. Because that's what we making it more. And we making more of me. I like that. And it, I want them to be bigger and better than me. Mm -hmm. It's 13 of them. It's all about them, really. I'm just doing it because I haven't been on TV in a while. I had the, the idea to do it. And I wanted to interact with other women. Yeah. It's not going to be a cakewalk. I'm not going to be Miss Nice Dime to everybody. Right. Like, it's just not going to happen like be that. Real. Yeah, I got to be real. And I got a certain standard that I want. And then I'm looking at when I go into the house, it goes into your attitude. They were saying I was asking messy questions and stuff like that. No, I was asking them to see how they're going to answer the question. You don't have to answer the question, Miss. If I ask you who you think make the least amount of money in the room. It's a way you can answer that without being nasty 100%. or putting nobody else down. Mm -hmm. I want to see how you're going to answer it. See, I'm smart. Yeah. You know, I want to see how smart you are. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, people take it how they want. I'm I'm happy for all the criticism because that means you watch it. It is. And that means stay tuned. Mm -hmm. You Hello. know? There's a lot of women that are... Hello. It's a lot of women that are talking about, you know, body enhancements. Like, mm -hmm. Gigi was on the show. She was talking about what mm -hmm. her ass enhance enhancements mm -hmm. have done mm -hmm. and, you know, how uncomfortable it is. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the women that are getting the work done to dance? If you are young and you ain't had no kids or nothing yet, I really beg that you don't do nothing yet. That's all I'm going to say. Out of my experience, like I said in the mint. I'm telling y'all, like I'm telling, like I'm in the mid, I'm telling them things I wish people would have told me. I wish I didn't do nothing before I had kids because they gave me naturally everything. Mm. Just growing up and becoming a woman gonna naturally give you what you're trying to, what you're looking for. That's what I say. I mean, to each his own, do what you want to do. I did what I wanted to do, so I can't knock nobody. That's just my advice. I wish I would have waited as far as a little while done. long. As far as getting your body done or adding to or whatever, because. Now I can't get it down. I got to take some shit away because mm -hmm. I didn't got to have two kids. And it's naturally there now along with what I added. So it's like now I'm like, what okay. What did you have done prior? I had shots done. That's it. Lipo shots. I had my breast done. But now I'm preparing myself because I want to try and reconstruct and like get things taken out. Not that it's hurtful or hurt me or anything, but I just... Like I said, I, I have baby weight now. I have natural hips now added on to what I added, and I didn't need that, mm -hmm. you know? So that's my only advice, really. Just wait to see how you're going to shape a out. A lot of women probably feel like they are not going to... They, they will maximize the, make, the amount money. of money they make if uh -huh. they have a certain type of body. Yeah, that's true, too. That's true, too. But I done seen girls this little make a bank, so... I it's feel like hustle. it's your yeah. I feel like it's your personality. Don't be flat and sloppy now. I yeah. ain't I ain't condoning it. Like mm -hmm. keep it tight, keep mm -hmm. it right. Like let's not be dumb here. You know, like keep it tight, keep it right, whatever. And some some people like bigger girls dancing, like the the BBWs. That's good too. But they be fine as fuck. They be tight <laughs> and right. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing I say. I say the girls. I feel like you gonna make money how you carry yourself. How you dress when you in the club, keeping your hygiene up, keeping your hair, your makeup done, your nails done, and all that. Okay. But if you feel like you want to do it, do it. That's on you, you know? Question. Um, after the club, uh, you said you went to rapping. Uh, what happened with that career? Like with my rap career? Yeah. It's still going on, baby. Don't okay. throw no shade. 
No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you know. You went from that and then you got on Love & Hip Hop. Is that what led you to Love & Hip Hop? Yeah, because when I was dancing, remember I said they told me to sign with Flo Rider. Mm-hmm. That's who signed me. To sign with him, I had to stop dancing. Right. So... That was a decision I had to make. Stop dancing or sign the record deal. So I signed the record deal. So with that, to answer your question, with that deal, I asked to be let out of that deal because I was upset about situations and how I felt like they wouldn't put me out. Yeah, you know, the typical artist thing. Mm -hmm. So that's how that went. Then Love & Hip Hop came. So with Love & Hip Hop, it's a situation where on Love & Hip Hop, you get on there to further your music, but it be more of a criticism thing when you get on Love & Hip Hop because I feel like Love & Hip Hop is more for the people going out than the people coming in. Really? Yeah, because they, they put me in a box to where she's ratchet, she's too rough around the edges, this is stripper fight music, da-da-da-da, but listen to what you hear right now. It's still the same thing, but it was too critiqued because it was on TV in front of everybody's face, so they looking at me country, I'm from Memphis, but guess what's going on now? What y'all say when I sat down? Memphis popping. Memphis popping. Yeah. But they had never heard that on TV. That was something new to people's ears. Yeah, it was like, what is, what is this thing? This wretched girl with this pink hair talking all crazy and loud from. But I'm from where I'm from. I'm from Memphis. I'm a product of where I'm from. I'm not ghetto. I'm, like I just told y'all, I was raised well. But that's my product of my environment. And, and the world wasn't adapted to that yet. It kind of came. That's why we can hear go gorilla, duh, 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 you know what I'm yeah. saying? And Gangsta Boo and Lil Chat, you know, they they set the tone. But, you know, then we got the the girls, um, Aliza and all of them mm. coming in gloss and up. Gloss Up and all of them. So it's like, and they didn't do TV. So it was like. How'd you get that opportunity for Love & Hip Hop? Did you just audition? They were, I think they was just reaching out and trying to cast and they reached out to me. And, and I guess they saw I was like doing music Did and Michelle stuff. Did Michelle hook that up or? No, she actually tried to, but I, they was already um, in the process of casting me when she told me about oh, okay. it. Because Kay Michelle's from Memphis, right? Yeah, she yes. from Memphis okay. too. So she was telling me, she was like, I went and ate dinner with her in Memphis one day and she was like, I think I can get you an interview on Love & Hip Hop. And I was like. That's a good impression. I was like, I'm already on Love & Hip Hop. She yeah. was like, what? And that's how she introduced me because she called them and was like, I'm introducing her. I'm bringing her, I'm going to come back to Love & Hip Hop just to bring her on. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, so she came back for that one episode just to bring me in and they pissed off that day too. So she was So y'all been friends for a long time? (laughs) You and K. Michelle, y'all been friends for a while? Yeah, for a while, like uh, before I got on TV and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But in Memphis, not so much. But I knew who she was, though. You know right. how you know people in your city from in past and they be like, damn, she seemed cool. Mm-hmm. And then we end up meeting through Gangsta Boo. Wow. Gangsta Boo be connecting everybody because we just had Drummer Boy on and yep. he was, she was so impactful in his life. Yes, and me and him, we had a podcast together called Beauty and the Beat. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Yeah, yeah. so he... She linked me and him up. Yeah. So, but that's what rest it's supposed to, to be my like. Sister. Yeah. It's supposed to be like that. Yeah, she always like- was that link. Yeah. She always wanted people. Even Lil Chat said, I met you through Boo. I'm like, you stuck with me now. So everybody, Echo, my publicist now, I met her through Boo. I, everybody, like, Boo was always that person that wanted to link everybody. You sure? She told me about drugs. She like, she asked me, you, sh- are you sure you and drum ain't why y'all ain't never worked together? That's odd. That's strange. And she always just want everybody mm-hmm. to link up and work, like, especially from the city. She yeah. feel like, why not? She's the bridge. Like She, she is. It seems like she knew how to connect people. Not, not just putting everybody together, but actually understanding the energy between Don Peace and Drama and why this would work. Why this would work. Yeah, yeah. Cool. she was the master at that. When we met you, you were single on Love & Hip Hop. Mm-hmm. Then you got in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Was that your... Uh, how long did you know your husband Well, before? Oh, I've been knowing Sean since... He, like, college. College, okay. Um, a little bit, like, in high, in the high school, college. We met, like, in passing. We had mutual friends. And he was like, ooh, when I first seen you, I thought you was so fine. I was like, but why you, you know... Get on down on me then. He did, but we kind of didn't never like 
become exclusive. You was outside, girl. You was you was in your bag trying to get your money. I was. Yeah. And I feel like we always talk about that. He was like, I don't think it would probably would have worked out with us if we would have linked up earlier than we did. It mm-hmm. was perfect timing for us because he was doing his thing, NBA. And you know how them NBA players be, <laughs> child. I would have killed this man. <laughs> so, uh-uh, uh-uh. You ain't finna be running around some of no damn away games. I'm coming too. So when did y'all rekindle? It was when I was on Love and Hip Hop. But we always kept in touch. Mm-hmm. Over the years, here and there, we kept in touch. Sometimes I'd be like, uh-uh, I ain't dealing with him right now. And I'd stand him up. He'd try to fly me out. I'd stand him up. He'd tell you, yeah. But um, when I was on Love & Hip Hop, we ended up linking up. And he, I thought he still had a, he had a, he had some situation, he had a situation going on. So I was like, if you still in your situation, I'm not doing it. But he was like, nah, we're not together no more. I was like, okay. Because I was on Love & Hip Hop at that time. I can't be playing around and being yeah. no mess and no drama, you know, with no other person and you dealing with something. No. But it seems that your feelings changed because y'all uh, then did uh, Marriage Boot Camp. Oh, yeah. And you were wanting to get married and a family. And Child, we was already married. Oh, okay. That's the T. We was married when we did Marriage Boot Camp. We just wanted to do it because okay. we just wanted that big check. I know, okay? that's right. That, that check must Hello. be good, though. Listen. I, I heard. I listen. <laughs> I was like, I ain't want to do real to see on that. And it was like, sent me that email. I was like, well, you know what? You had said what? It ain't going to oh. hurt nothing little 14 days. You know, you know it ain't going to hurt us nothing. It's a little vacation anyway. You know, mm-hmm. so we was already actually living in L.A. at the time anyway. Okay. So it was... It wasn't nothing. Blessing was baby, though. That was the only thing that was, like, real tough for me, leaving her 14 days yeah. and stuff like that. But, yeah, we ended up doing marriage boot camp, but I wasn't turning down marriage boot camp. Yeah. Y'all want me to do... But <laughs> after, they pissed me off on marriage boot camp. <laughs> but it was just, like, it, it was to come with the territory because it was just, like, they couldn't find nothing on us. It was just, like, they just couldn't find... It was just, like, we was just too... Yeah, to, y'all like, too locked in. Yeah, yeah, it was like they had to try to figure something out, but it was neither here nor there because it wasn't no drama with. You yeah, guys. it wasn't no drama with us, and we we were, really were already married, so yeah. we was really playing. Like they didn't know. Just shout out, shout out to we TV. I love y'all. Y'all was <laughs> y'all was all right. Y'all played a little bit, but as far as how they treated the cast and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you know, make sure they were good with it. But we. Did have no storyline. We had to come yeah. up with something. Yeah. What you was about to say before you before you uh <laughs> listen, don't play with us. don't play with our season. We had the y'all? best season. <laughs> Soldier Boy and Nia. Oh my oh, god. Walker god. and right. Tammy. Me and Sean. Fizz yeah. and um I don't remember. Tiffany. Uh-huh. Mo and Carl. Oh my gosh. And I feel like the biggest Ooh. the biggest T was Soldier Boy and Nia. Oh, and for then sure. Mo and her man. That was that that was an experience. I don't know why they won't bring they should at least re- reunite us. Yeah, they like should. that we I, was I like know, I don't know about Soldier Boy. And, no, that uh, season and was Nia. crazy. That that season was absolutely why? crazy. They pissed you off she a couple sure. of times. They pissed me off. A couple of times. They pissed me off. I know that you were I was about to leave. Y'all were hot when they started talking about weed. Yes. Asking y'all to smoke less. Cause why are we in LA? What's the point? <laughs> we, was, we were talking about that. They was mad because we weren't mad. Yeah, <laughs> right. But, but then also too, when you guys did the lie detector, mm-hmm. and Sean asked, "Had you cheated on him since y'all had been exclusive?" Which was crazy because they asked him, "Will he ever marry me?" But that was your question to him, though, right? Like, did yeah, you? Yeah, but he. If that's the case, he failed too. We was already married. Yeah, it was all a game. Like I just felt like. They had nothing else on us, so they had to like kind of blow that up. Yeah, so that wasn't a genuine question for you. Was that was, was that- his? I mean, no, that one that was like a question that he asked because he know I would pass it. Mm, you get what I'm okay, saying? Okay. So he like, together. yeah, he knew I would pass it. I thought I would pass the test because mm-hmm. that's literally. I was like, yeah, that's perfect. Ask me that, cause okay. that that's something but I know he, I pass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Cause the people deception? asked him like, that's what you chose to ask, and he was just like, that's what I was comfortable asking. Yeah, and but I you, was comfortable if I, you, I would have just tried to defer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause we discussed what the question gonna be. Okay. I was like, yeah, that's a good one. Ask me that. It was never no. We didn't even really put no thought into the questions like that. We were like, we gonna ask something <laughs> easy so we know we are pass. That was but a good it one. was deception, right? Yes, but they. That's the game they played. But was that so? That really was you. Really passed it. I know I passed it, girl. I would not even <laughs> listen. 
I don't see through my husband and have not seen through him since we got together. So that's why that's why I was like, when we came up with our questions, that's why I was like, yeah, ask me that. That's perfect. Okay. Because I'm like, I know I'm going to pass that. Mm-hmm. They knew what they were doing. We shouldn't have set ourselves up like that. Yeah. We should have asked something a little bit less that they could make something out of. Yeah. Something we, small. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's where TV come in. That's reality yeah. TV. Yeah. That's the game they play. Ooh. So throughout all your career, you know, <laughs> now fine. you're a mom, you're, mm-hmm. uh, you have a husband. How has life changed for you? Um, Really, life has just been a blessing. Honestly, like I, having my kids and my husband and being able to spend time and have a family, it's been the best thing ever. And being back doing my own show, I didn't ever think coming back to reality TV, I'd be back with my own show. So it's it, it, life has been great. I can't complain. I, I really hadn't really put out a lot of music because I really just been writing and working and I ain't really been too pressed about it. But with the show coming out, I think I'm going to just like push some stuff out with it. And How's your relationship with your mom now? now? Mm-hmm. Mm. Still a work in progress? It's a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we were doing good. I don't know if y'all watched the show, but Sean had linked us back up after us not talking for a while. Mm-hmm. We were doing good for a while, but things go left. You know, outside of TV and real life things go live. Okay. And some stuff I be trying to get past. I pray about it, but you know, it'll come with time. Probably. Yeah, well, I, I, I pray on that for I you. I talked for about sure. that on the show with the girls too. They was begging me to call her on Mother's Day. It was like a lot, you know. How's did, the relationship you? with your children? I mean, if you don't have one with me, you don't have one with them. Oh, okay. So it's not one. Mm. That's tough. I know yeah. that's hurtful. No, yeah. no, like no matter how easily you can kind of talk about it and respond yeah. to questions, you learn to hurtful. you learn to kind of cope with things. But this, you know, you then I see people and they're bond with their mom, and I be like, damn, this this cool. You know, wish I had it, but mm-hmm. it just didn't get. It just hasn't got there. I don't know. Yeah. I don't you said know. your mom was strict. Are you raising your kids similarly to how your mom raised you? Are you catching yourself like, man? That's what my mama did. Um, I try not to. Some stuff, yes. Some stuff, yes. I do live by some stuff my mama live by. Like, you ain't spending the night over nobody else's house. It's just not happening. You know, this, this, then the third. Because it's just too crazy out here. But as she gro- as blessing grows and wisdom grows, I'm going to put my own twist into what my mom and my dad Cause see, my mama feel like my dad is just too lenient, mm-hmm. and it's the vice versa with her. So I kind of want to be in the middle. Yeah. I don't want to be too lenient, and I don't want to be too strict neither. Cause I, a lot of stuff I ain't tell her, cause I feel like I wasn't comfortable enough yeah. to tell her. So I don't want to develop that relationship, especially with my daughter, where she feel like she can't come and talk to me about things going on. And you'd be the I best need person to know. for her to talk to. Yeah, I'm the one who's gonna tell you what's up. So come to me. Nobody ain't gonna keep it real with you like I am. Did you see that Kylie Jenner said, well, she admitted, I guess, to having her breast done at 19. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and she said that she would be devastated if her daughter decided to do any type of plastic surgery at that age. Me too, I ain't gonna lie. But I didn't do nothing at 19. I was probably like 22, 23 when I started getting into messing around. Would you be okay if your daughter wanted to dance and all that too? No, I'm sitting at the table to wear blessing. She won't have to. Okay. But you didn't have to. You did it out of curiosity. Yeah. That's a good point. But I also did need money. You get what I'm saying? It, as an adult. You, you was gotta, motivated by the money. Yeah, because you got to understand, I didn't go to pay if they wanted me to go. So I had to, once you don't go to pay if your parents tell you to go, you got to get it on your own, mm-hmm. pretty Back much. The you know, the spot was paying you. Yeah, at the airport. And then I ended up getting fired from there. How you get fired from your own family spot, I don't oh know. But God. I got fired. <laughs> Why y'all fired me anyway? Who fired you, your cousin? My cousin, my <laughs> uncle, my stepmama worked there. You let it go down, internet. How did I get fired? <laughs> No, I'm just, I love y'all. Now, to this day, I love them. Is but your son going to end up playing in NBA, maybe? Well, Booster said that. <laughs> He said in Jesus' name, he going to be a ball player. No, but um, <laughs> whatever he chooses to do, you know, I just want my kids to be happy, healthy. And even to answer the question with, with the dancing thing, I don't want Blessing to do anything like that. I'm sending it to where, the tone to where she have her own table. She want a YouTube show now. So, I mean, I don't know, you know. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't 
turn my back yeah. on anything that my children if I disagree with it that's the that's the uh, friction with me and my mom you can't turn your back on your child you gotta still be there even if you disagree with what they doing I, they still need to know that I, I still could call my mama yeah, you know what I'm saying I didn't have that so that's what I want to do some more with my kids and as far as Wisdom being a ball player Wisdom already saying basketball and he won and he's shooting <laughs> in the goal so it's in his blood he's um, in the highest percentile like as far as height when you take him to the doctor he's very tall to be one years old so Whatever whatever makes him happy. Yeah. You know, just be a hustler, be a, a man. I want him to be a family man and be a, a man of his word like his daddy mm -hmm. and, and just be a stand up man. Oh, that's and, and that's what I'm that's what I'd be proud of. We appreciate you, Jessica Don, for joining us on the Baller Alert show. You were a lot of fun. Yes. Um was I for real? Yes. You got you got mint. <laughs> what else you got? The mint is dropping August the twenty seventh. Audition episode is out now. That's on now. That's T V. Um, I got the men's soundtrack that's gonna drop as well. My music, along with some of the mm -hmm. girls from the show, some of their music. That's dope. Yeah, so be on the lookout for that. I have my skincare line, F1 Cosmetics. So I got that. I'm working on this. Like, I got a lot of stuff I'm doing in one. Blessing got her YouTube channel. Sean working on some things he got going on too. So just be on the lookout for us. We just gonna try to stay active and stay in y'all's face. in the beats. Beauty and the Beast. Shout out to Drama Boy Fresh. I think y'all need to go ahead and do a project together. Oh, that's what we... He got a lot of music that's coming on The Mint, too. Okay. okay. But we are doing us a project together. It's only right. It's yeah. only right. Yeah. Drama yeah, has support. Boy. Hey, yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. Definitely tune in to our podcast, Beauty and the Beats podcast. That's going up. I'm enjoying working with Drama. It's been pleasant and, and it's been a great experience. Before we get out of here, we got a pep talk with Jessica Dunn. Hey, y'all. It's Jessica Dunn checking in. I know y'all ain't seen me in a while, but I'm back. And I want y'all to always stay positive. Keep Keep God first and stay consistent in whatever you do. Always be yourself because can't nobody be you better than you, baby. Keep it moving. And not, just because you because somebody said no, that don't mean it's not a yes right around the corner. So stay focused.